Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode in my cloud architecture series, let's call it. I don't actually have a specific name for it, but I'm, I'm kind of going through um, the cloud adoption framework, specifically Microsoft Azure, because that's kind of what my main area of focus has been, and that's kind of what I've specialised in. So we've kind of already looked at um, some uh, some governance stuff, and I've highlighted areas that, I, in my experience, I feel a lot of organisations don't spend enough time planning and designing. Um, and those areas are obviously governance, as I mentioned, so I've already done like a, a video on naming convention uh, and tagging and those specific areas are where i really feel like um, I've, I've just done some sort of um i've done some little uh, kind of practical things around that in my videos as well you know kind of shown um, examples of how you can cope with the naming convention and a tagging strategy etc um, i'm going to go into the portal at some point in the series and kind of put that into practice and, and you know, but those exercises have just kind of gone through just to show you how easy it can be. Today, I want to focus on a bit of identity. Um, now, again, generally, you know, um, you know, we, you know, identity is a new perimeter. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff around the the security stuff further on this series. But um, with 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 the emergence of cloud in the last ten to fifteen years, you know, identity has become the new perimeter, um, and that that you know, is taken over from the networking. Now, it's not just your office. Um, the 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 perimeter is much wider now because you can work from anywhere. But there are certain areas around cloud where I feel, especially cloud identity, sorry, where I feel again a lot of organisations have a misunderstanding. I think, and again, this is my own experience having spoken to customers around I don't know, in public sector and private sector. So you know, most companies have a good grasp, but where I feel the confusion comes around is the difference between Entra and Azure. Um, so Entra being more SaaS related and, and, and Azure being more IaaS and PaaS related. And it's a difference in, in managing those role-based access controls. And I'll give you an example, you know, the amount of times where you're working with a customer on a project, you'll, you'll request some access um, to Azure. So you, you need some access to be able to at least see subscriptions and, and resources and be able to do, you know, implement what you need to implement. And they say, oh yeah, I've given you, I've given you global admin. Global admin is, is is an enter role that's that you can give you the access you need to Azure. So that's the sort of thing I want to go through and, and talk about the different scopes, different levels. So again, I'm going to use this this whole, I'm going to do a bit of an exercise where where we talk about that. So this is a, a bit of a, a loose diagram and I'm going to kind of go through the different relationships between um, you know, Microsoft Entra roles and Azure RBAC roles. Okay, so we've got we've got the two areas here, right? We've got we've got Microsoft Entra, and we've got um, Azure RBAC roles. Okay, so um, first of all, what I want to do is look. This is my this is my Entra tenant, right? So I'm going to stick that here. So that that's very important. So we've got my Microsoft Entra tenant. There we go. And that obviously sits in Microsoft Entra, and that that's this is a, this is the the entity or the tenant, um, the identity provider that controls the the different roles okay so you know we can see we've got different items here different different um, icons we've also got different roles as well so when it comes to entre we've got various different roles so uh, global admin is obviously the the sort of um i don't know what you want to call it you probably call it better call it the the, the uh, quote unquote god god role you know access to everything global admin shouldn't really have more than five of these and again I'm within your environment I'll, I'll go through more about what these different roles can do um, in, a, in a later video probably so then you've got things like contributor um, which which isn't an entre role so that's not an entre role billing admin this is an entre role so this gives you access to um, you know Microsoft 365 uh, billing so your licensing subscriptions you know those sort of things your yeah, m365 subscriptions then I have Reader, which again is is not, we're gonna, that's going to be an RBAC, uh, an Azure RBAC role, as is owner. But then you've got things like application admin. So then here, if you like, uh, if you like someone who, you can, if you're part of the, the team that deploys applications, especially within, you know, um, the Entra Enterprise application or Entra um, sort of registered applications, you kind of have that access. For developers, again, who develop those SaaS applications, another role is the application developer. So you can see the difference, with, you know, these are specific to Entra roles. And then, um, th so these are four roles where kind of, you know, th th there's a lot more examples. And we're going to go through those, you know, when I do a bit more practical within the, within the, um, within the tenant or the Entra tenant, I'll be doing some more demos like that. We then have Azure RBAC roles, okay? So this is where um, we, we, we kind of have to define the difference between 
you know, the entree rolls. And so when I, you know, if I ask a customer for access, um, you know, to be able to configure some virtual machines and some resource groups and some networking, it's things like, oh, if I want, if I want to have just, you know, I want to be able to just see what services are there without changing anything. There's things like contributor, which give you those, um, essentially this is, this is like, uh, being able to give you access to be able to add, um, some virtual machines, resources, and again, depends what level you do it at. Then if you want to be able to see everything and just have a look at, you know, what's in there, you can have reader access. So these are Azure RBAC specific roles, right? And you can see a bit of the difference here. We've then got owner role. Now this is the, the equivalent of global admin within, within, um, Azure, because it gives you access to everything under that scope. And we're going to talk a little bit about scopes in a minute. And then we've got user admin. So this is when you need to, if you're, if you're someone who needs to assign permissions, if you need to assign permissions to the different scopes, you would get, um, user admin. Okay. So again, just want to, these are the difference. I want to highlight the difference between the different roles. Okay. So these are our back as your back roles, we've got contributor, reader, owner, but on the left hand on here and up in the entry roles, we have global admin, billing admin, application admin, application developer. So these are some of the differences. So if I ask for, access to you know um like i said if i have access to if I want access to read or to be able to see resources under a specific azure resource group i want reader i don't want global reader i don't want you know global admin or anything like that because that's on that's not going to give me access so that's the, the difference there okay then we have we do have a relationship though between Entra and Azure, you know, Azure RBAC roles because again, when it comes to giving that access, you can use and we're going to get into to PIM in, in probably the next video. I want to show examples of, of how you can you know separate the two. But there is a relationship between Entra because Entra and Azure RBAC because um your identity provider for Azure is your Entra tenant and that's how they're connected. So we have this concept, I'm going to do a bit of freehand here, so I do apologize, the root level admin. So Entra comes down into this root level admin, right? And this is the, this is the, um, where the global admin kind of, uh, user admin with the elevated access comes in. So let's move this here. This is our root admin person kind of, uh, so it's not the, I mean, again, global admin with elevated access has, can be there. Right. And then that, that filters down into, uh, our sort of Azure. So that that's root level access, but then underneath that root level. And again, I'll go into this more when I talk about governance and the management structure, this is where we start to look at the different scopes now within Azure. Okay. And, and assigning the elevated access to, and sort of these roles here that we're talking about these um contributor reader owner this is where we assign them okay these are assigned the entre roles are assigned to the user or to a group whereas these are actually signed the azure our back roles are actually signed to the the scope of the, the different level resource and let's get into a little bit of that now we'll show the relationship with the hierarchy now as well so at the top level we have that root management level okay so that's the icon i'm going to use for root management uh, and there's our root management there okay so that goes here so straight away, this has, this is like the top level. Okay. So the root comes down here and goes there. Okay. And then at the next level, we have the, the top level management group. And again, I'm going to be showing a lot of the hierarchy of this in this series. And when I talk about, you know, I'm going to some practical elements around design and governance. So this is how, and again, we have just do a bit of freehand. So that's the top level. This is the second level. Under management groups, set your resource, set your subscription resources, right? So if we bring this down here, this is where our subscription comes in, right? So these are the different hierarchy kind of um, levels we're talking about within our governance. Okay, and then that comes down here. And then underneath the sort of subscription, we have our um, resource group. Okay, so you have all your resource groups under your subscriptions. Oh, there we go. Put it there. There we go. Um, so this is our resource group back on here, right? Um, and again, there you go. So that's the next level. We then have our um, resources. So let's just move this icon up here as well. So that's our, for our different entre roles there. Um, and so this is where we have then our different resources. So, you know, we could have virtual machine. We could have a web app. And we could have a storage account, for example. Okay. 
but these groups, as I said, are assigned at different levels. So let me explain. If I was to give a reader level at this top level here, that means, right, that as a, as a user, your account can see and have a view access to everything down because it's because it inherits everything underneath the root manager group is going to inherit that permission. So it's 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 you need to understand the inheritance aspect of it because if you're giving like contributor or owner access this top level, that means that that account is going to have access to all like god level access to all this sort of stuff, right? So you need to be careful at what level you're giving access, right? Especially if you've got if you've got siloed project teams, um, it's probably better to give them access at this level here, the subscription level, because you might have a, especially when you get like development teams uh, or even, you know, specific resource groups, give them access at that level rather than the resource level, okay, which is here. Um, with this access here, they can then um, have, uh, they can update and create resources within the resource group specifically rather than anything else. Um, probably better to give access like that. Again, this is what needs planning. This is not. This is just me spitballing, right? So you never want to. Owner access should really be for, you know, break glass accounts and things like that. You should never really give on. And again, you should have a limited amount of um, uh, access for that. And again, user administrators or the user access admin, that is the role that allows you to set permissions. So really, again, you need to limit the amount of access people have on that. So these should be your top level admins, the people who manage manage this. They're not developers. They're not. You know, the support team, the people who manage this, okay, it might be your second line or your third line level support teams. But there should be an element of like, okay, we need to have two to three or maybe max five people who have access at this level and can can set up and 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 govern all the rest of this. And again, I'd say that as well. It needs to be it needs to be and those people need to have access at that level. Don't I wouldn't I personally don't recommend giving this level of access further below unless there's a real business need for it. So if there's a if there's a if there's a team that want to manage their own subscription, then maybe you can give them that access down there. But again, that all needs to be going through privilege access, privilege access, and privilege identity management, which we'll get into in a later video. But hopefully, this explains the sort of difference between Microsoft Ontra roles, and again, these assign these these give you tenant level access, you know, to that. Uh, so if you've got billing admin, you've got billing admin at the tenant access. If you've got application developers at tenant access as well. But then there is a relationship between those because that is your that is your identity provider for this. So as far as managing the access goes, you do it from Entra using uh, privileged identity management. We'll get into that in another video. Um, but the, 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 what, you need, what people need to understand is and what organizations need to understand is you, you manage them separately. They need to be planned out. What groups are you going to have? And it all needs to be assigned via groups as well. It's, it's, it's not recommended. And well, again, I'm going to go into some practical elements of that in, in a later video. But you know, you need to create role assignable groups. Um, you know, on, only some roles can can reset the password, as I mentioned, reset accounts and and assign permissions. Um, and if if you don't have, you know, the, there's a mixture of, and I'll get into this in, in a later video. There's a mixture of of custom roles. Well, uh, uh, what we call. Um, uh, built-in roles, sorry, and, and custom roles. And again, that's something that we're going to get into as well. Um, but for now, I just want you to do a little example of a bit of a practical element of the difference and how that hierarchy sits and the connection, the relationship between those. So, um, and again, it's all in the planning of it, right? You need to plan your entre roles, your RBAC roles. And that's what we're going to do in this series. We're going to get into a little bit about that um, in future episodes. So, Thank you for watching. Drop me a comment on my video if there's some quest any questions you have, anything you want me to, to answer or, or highlight or you know if you let me know how you guys manage your, your role based access control and, and how you um, manage that sort of uh, hierarchical element, the different scopes, what do you you know, and if there's any questions around that you have, drop me a message on the video below. Um, and make sure you are subscribed as well. I've got a lot more content coming. Obviously, I have my regular Nerdio uh, kind of Wednesday, and that's going to be changing a little bit. Not quite yet because the announcement hasn't happened. Um, but there'll be a lot more content with Nerdio coming and a lot more content around the cloud adoption framework in Azure coming. So thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.